What is a tradition by definition? Based on Encyclopedia Britannica, it is way of thinking, behaving or doing something that has been used by the people in a particular group, family, society, etc. for a long time. Based on Wikipedia, a tradition is a belief or behavior passed down within a group of society with symbolic meaning or special significance with origins in the past. The Latin trade literally meaning to, to transmit, to hand over, to give for safekeeping. Many traditions were invented on purpose. Tradition does not equal custom, does not equal habit. If you would like to start a traditional, a real traditional Kung Fu system, then you definitely should watch this video. Real tradition is deep, it has a meaning, a purpose, it's being invented for a reason, to achieve a goal. Everything which is part of the tradition is supposed to serve the goal. For thousands of years, societies, different groups of people who had something in common, shared the same views, had the same goals or interests, tried to build up systems, frames, which helped to achieve that and pass it through generations. Some of them worked and they are still working, some of them not, or became irrelevant and dissolved in the history of mankind. Nowadays, it is very popular to call something traditional, uh, regardless of its original meaning. So it is the case with martial arts. But many so-called traditions became empty. They are degraded and became just simple habit of some people without having the original meaning or having any practicality at all. When you step on the, on the long path of learning a traditional Kung Fu system, as we say in Hungarian, you cut off more than one can chew. At least you have to be very, very careful how you choose, because this is a really deep rabbit hole you can go down into, and you can spend a lot of time, money and effort, and at the end you are coming up with nothing. You have to put some effort in investigation before you jump in. If you watched my previous video about how to choose the right martial art for you, then let's assume that you have already a list of schools and you are starting to go down and visit them personally. Uh, before going forward to dig a little bit deeper, we have to introduce a few notions to have a common ground and the same understanding. So, grab a cup of coffee or tea or whatever pleases you and then let's get into it. Our starting point is that the tradition is relying on principles. And these principles were passed through time from generation to generation. And every generation is a proof of a working method by achieving the same goals and having the same results. This is very important. So, let's start with our first notion. What is a system? According to Wikipedia, a system is a group of interacting or interrelated elements that act according to a set of rules to form a unified whole. What is a principle? Again, according to Wikipedia. A principle is a proposition or value that is a guide for behavior or evaluation. It can be desirably followed or it can be an inevitable consequence of something such as the laws observed in nature or the way that the system is constructed. The principles of such system are understood by the users as the essential characteristics of the system or reflecting system's design purpose and the effective operation or use of which would be impossible if any one of the principles was to be ignored. A system may be explicitly based on and implemented from a list of principles. It may sound a little bit too scientific, but it's uh, really important and uh, definitely applicable even for our martial arts today. So, <clears throat> let's translate it to our uh, daily life to have a better understanding. As mentioned before, a real tradition is a system with a specific goal. To achieve these goals, they created rules, principles, which are cornerstones, uh, post signs and drivers of these systems and they have two different purposes. First, they lead towards the goal what should be achieved. The second, these are signs, post signs, you can check anytime during your path and you can adjust your development 
according to these post signs, goals, principles to see whether you are going in the good direction or you are already somewhere else completely. None of these principles can be ignored. Otherwise, you will never reach the goal you want it to be achieved. There are many other things built around principles. Some of them are not so crucial, some of them are crucial, but for sure the principles themselves are the most important cornerstones of such kind of tradition. To bring some real life examples, let's say that our goal is to travel fast, far and uh, in an effective way and in comfort. We build a car which is our system. What do we need? We need a strong engine, we need fuel, we need transmission, we need wheels, driving wheels and we need a uh, bodyguard. These are all our principles. If any of these are missing, then we will not travel anywhere. It's not the best example, but I hope you get the point. What are the goals in a martial arts in general? It's very easy. To be strong, to be fast, to be precise, to have stamina, to have great fighting skills, and to be healthy. All martial arts are aiming in general for these goals. So what is the difference? The difference is the way how they get there. Real traditional Kung Fu systems have specific rules, specific principles to reach these goals. So how can you identify a real traditional Kung Fu system? You have to look for the principles, for the methods and compare them, compare them to the goals they want to achieve. From here on, I will use examples from Tung Kong Choga Tong Long Kung Fu because this is the system I know more about, I'm more familiar with. But actually, all these principles uh, I will mention, uh, you can find in other systems as well. Originally, all Hakka systems, like Tong Kong Choga Tong Long, uh, had these principles. And you can find also these principles in other systems as well, like Tai Chi or Singi. Even they were uh, passed through other martial arts as well. But this is a topic for another video. What makes our system, Tung Kong Choga Tong Long, unique? It has specific goals. These goals I mentioned before are very general, but our system has very specific goals which break down these generalities. So what are our goals? To harness the hidden powers of our body, to unify the whole body in a way that we can use the strength of a given part of the body in a given moment in which otherwise it would not participate. To get conscious control over small areas of the body in order to make them strong. To refine the power chain gained thereby in order to generate a sudden burst of power, what we call the shock. To develop skills that work in all fighting situations, hence to reach freedom of movements. In our case, these goals are supported by the following principles. Keep your chest in which helps to sink and transfer your powers from your lower body through your back to your arms and hands. Keep your shoulders forward, again, help to transmit the power and keep your chest in. Keep your elbow in, helps to use your power efficiently and direct it to serve your fighting effectiveness. Tuck your buttock in, helps to connect your lower and upper body. These are only just a few the more important principles of our system and as you can see they are all leading into the same direction supporting the same goal but it is not enough to find principles you have to keep the principles in your practice this is very important so if you have principles but you're not following them it's just nothing if you go to a place and see that they do not have principles or either they are overlooking it, not following the principles, then actually that system is already empty. It's not traditional anymore. Something to look for when you do your research is a training methodology for every aspect. Since you said the goals are not general but are very specific, you should look for specific methods. First, strength. A real traditional Kung Fu system has its own power generation method, the engine of the system. They have specific exercises as Cho Tong does, for example with Chai Sao or Doi Jong. These exercises, in our case, are done in pairs. The power generation method of Cho Tong is very much enforcing the principles. So if you go down and look at the training and you, do, and you see how they do 
the transcendental doujong, you should see those principles that I mentioned before. These are very important exercises and they are strengthened by your body in a specific way to create a specific structure which is building up your power in the future. The structure and power it creates allows the practitioner to be able to use all power of the body and be very effective. When someone gets in contact with such a practitioner who is good in Choga Tonglong and has a good training method, keeps the principles and his body structures built up, they will feel like this person is very, very heavy because he is able to use his whole body power. The person who gets in contact with him will feel all his power which will make him heavy. As a second step, this kind of power should be channeled in the right way to be effective, really, in fact. It's important to mention here that going to the gym can make you strong, but it's never the way of a traditional martial art. So if this part is missing from a school's methodology, then you have to know that they are not a traditional martial arts system anymore. Maybe they were once, but right now they are not because they lost the engine, the power generation method. Stamina. This is the fuel of your engine. For building stamina, there are several uh, versions. One version definitely could be running, but in real traditional martial arts, that is rarely the case. In Choga Tonglong, definitely it's not. Rather, is to, to do such exercises which are really forcing you into this body structure and do it for a long time to exhaust you and strengthen you in this way and be able to keep this power for a longer term. But beside these two exercises in Choga Tonglong, we have other Qigong exercises, both hard and soft Qigong exercises, which are helping you to build up your stamina. So if you don't see any stamina building method in a school, uh, then that is already again empty and it's not traditional anymore. Toughness. This is really a tricky one because you can get tough in many ways. But you have to know that real traditional Kung Fu systems tend to have a sustainable method. Sustainable method means that they are looking for long-term development and they don't want to ruin your health. That's not definitely not on the agenda of a traditional martial art or traditional Kung Fu system. You can get tough in a way that every day your neighbor comes over with a baseball bat and uh, beats you really badly. After a while you can get used to it and you will be tough. The only problem is that if he stops coming over for a few weeks or one year or maybe just a few, a few days and he beats up again, beats you up again, then it will be so bad as it was on your first day. So in the meantime you just lost your resilience and this is not a sustainable method. Real traditional Kung Fu system is quite the opposite. So it is sustainable, it goes with smaller steps and increasing your toughness until you reach a decent skill. When you reach a certain skill and you stop, your, your abilities, your skills will never decrease under a certain level, which is still a high level. Maybe you won't be as tough as you were before or as strong as you were before, but you will definitely don't go uh, lower than a specific level, which for general people is still a very high level. That's what we call sustainable. Of course, the methods usually, in, even in a real traditional Kung Fu system, are not really pleasant, but they are bearable and as I said, I just repeat myself, they are sustainable. If you do not see a sustainable method, then again, that system is not traditional anymore. Health. Traditional Kung Fu systems uh, we have a very specific focus on the health aspect. It is very important since they are looking for long-term development. And as I mentioned before, ruining your health is definitely not on the agenda for a real traditional Kung Fu system. For this reason, they have many kind of exercises, which could be hard chicken, soft chicken exercising, exercises, breathing, and meditation all helping to build up your health in a way that even in your late uh, years you will be still uh, in a good health and a good shape. These exercises are increasing your energy level or even they calm you down, they bring you to a relaxed or a focused uh, state of mind. Also, the training method of your traditional Kung Fu system is designed in a way that is kind of an optimal mixture of these exercises, of hard exercises 
and soft exercises because both are very important. So you cannot overdo one aspect uh, over the other because then again you will not reach the goal what originally was set. The practitioner usually, in, at least in Choga Pain Mantis, is able to pick its own training method where he can or she can mix up these different kind of exercises to create the best fitting uh, training method for uh, himself or herself. And sometimes these exercises can be a complete subset of exercises which can be practiced standalone from the system. So in any case you want to focus on a specific aspect, you grab a group of exercises and you can practice them separately and of course you can use them all together and have a complex complete training program. Just as an example, the late Grandmaster Yip Shoi, the father of the actual Grandmaster Ichi Kaon, died at the uh, age of 92 and uh, even in his late uh, years, in the last two or three years, he was still practicing every day and uh, he was still sharp and fast and quite strong, especially at that age he was uh, at that time. His son, Yip Chi Kaon, at the age uh, of over 70, he's still incredibly strong, stronger than any person we we really know he's fast, he's sharp, and all achieved by the right training method. If you don't experience this in the school you go and visit, then this is not a traditional martial art anymore. Sparring. All traditional Kung Fu systems have uh, their own exercises which are mimicking real situations. These are called drills. They are practiced in pairs and uh, in these schools are also practicing some kind or some form of free fighting. Also, it's very important to mention that uh, in a real traditional Kung Fu uh, system or school, uh, they uh, do not throw the beginners in front of lions, so they will not make them fighting uh, against each other or against uh, higher level students because it has no uh, meaning since they don't have the necessary foundation to be able to really do some fighting. It will be rather, uh, let's say, a funny act where they can be beaten up by all the students, which is mostly bullying. Uh, these systems also have a specific approach to fighting, like uh, what they defend, what they attack, what kind of way they are defending themselves. If you don't see this, then again, this is not a traditional Kung Fu system anymore. Speed and precision. Speed is basically coming from power and the right use of the body. But if you look at Choga Tong Long, speed is not just about power. It is also about learning the difference between the different power levels and how to do the transition between these power levels. What makes a movement in Choga Tong Long fast its time is very short between the two different stages or levels of power. If you achieve the highest level of power in Choga, this transition is very, very short. That's why uh, from outside it's kind of a burst of power and the feeling is like uh, getting shock. That's why we call it shock power. Power and speed are very much affecting each other. So, if you focus more on power, then you will lose some speed at, uh, on the other end because you will get a bit more rigid. If you focus mostly on speed, then you will not have the enough power to be effective in a fight. So, uh, to be on the optimal level, you have somehow to balance between them. As great keeper Mian Master Ichikan once said, finally you need to decide if you want to be strong or fast. That's the most effective way in, uh, in our system is to find the right balance between them because in that case you will be also strong and fast at the same time. Also traditional systems are, let's say, playing with the speed by uh, controlling the distance, the fighting distance. So in case of Choga Tolong, for instance, which is a close combat system, we uh, develop our power in the way that we never withdraw before uh, striking our hands. So it means that from a short distance we are able to strike uh, effectively. But this really means that you need a very good foundation to be really strong and be able to bring out your power in a really short distance and be effective. As I mentioned, Cho Gatong Long has this principle that we never withdraw our hands before striking. 
which it's not just making it fast, but also it's very hard to detect. Uh, what develops precision? Forms, actually, and techniques are developing precision because forms and techniques have their specific purpose. Uh, some people say that uh, you should not practice them because there's no uh, fighting value of the forms. But actually the case is that forms are not designed for that. They are designed to channel your power in a specific way, to teach you how to use your powers in the most optimal way. So does the technique as well. And this is the importance of forms and techniques. Again, if you do not see this, then that's not a traditional system anymore. This was a lot of information, I suppose, to process, but let's uh, once more summarize it. A real traditional martial art is a system relying on principles. And that is not enough. These principles should be kept, should be understood by the teachers, by the students, and should not be overlooked. If these principles are ignored, overlooked, then this is a dying art. Maybe it's dead already, but it's very close to be a dead system. It's just a question of time and it will disappear. If you went down to a school and everything with what I just said, then you found a real traditional martial art, which is a real value nowadays because you barely found it. So then stay there, commit yourself and practice. Nowadays it's a popular trend and they claim that they are practicing traditional Kung Fu. But when you go there and you watch them carefully, you realize that they do not have principles or they do not understand the principles, they don't keep the principles, they really actually don't know what they are doing. And that means that that will never be an effective system. Also, people tend to think that uh, they have a very good idea how to modernize a traditional martial art. But the thing is that you cannot modernize something you, not, you do not understand. Again, here's a list of things you should do when you go down and visit a traditional Kung Fu school. Ask about their goals. Ask about their rules and principles and methods. During the training, try to identify the principles and see whether they are kept or not by the students, especially by the teachers. Ask about the different aspects of your system and also about the approach, how they are developing them. Like strength, stamina, uh, toughness, speed and accuracy and so on and so forth. Finally, that will give you a pretty good picture about them. Of course, as in my previous video I explained, there will be a lot of things you will just be able to uh, identify just after a few years maybe of practice and then you will really realize that uh, what is the case and you can decide whether you stay or just leave it and looking for something else. I hope now you have a better picture about uh, a real traditional Kung Fu system and it will help you on your way. Really, I wish you the best because this is a hard path to go on and you really have to be careful if you are really uh, serious about learning a traditional martial art. So, I wish you guys all the best and if you have any questions, you anytime can reach us, just write us an email, you can find it in the uh, description below and uh, just get in contact with us. We are very happy to help you uh, in your martial arts journey. So, Keep in shape.